So I first saw Gyotaku prints when I was in Japan, and I would go fishing very often to the rivers and the seafront. And every time I would go to the tackle shop, just about anywhere in Japan, you see Gyotaku prints. And as rough as they were, I immediately fell in love with them. This is the process of Gyotaku. My main goal for each piece before I start is to figure out how to bring back life to the fish through this centuries-old process. These are the tools that I use for gyotaku. This is called sumi. It's an ink stone, basically made of charcoal that's really refined and ground with water in the suzuri. This is my brush, and this is a hanko, which is my name seal. It all starts with the ink. The ink that is traditionally used is called sumi. It's made out of soot and ground with water. I think the most important part for me is applying the ink because however I apply the ink, whether I blend it or just, you know, swab the fish with it, whatever is on the ink is actually what transfers directly to the paper. And so much of my time is spent preparing the ink, blending the ink, and creating the image before it's transferred over. The paper that is traditionally used is called washi. Wa means Japanese, shi means paper, and it's made from mulberry bark. Once the inking is done and I place the paper over the fish, there's a bit of a handicap since I can't see the fish anymore, and it's my fingers that have to feel it out and, and tell me what's going on as I, as I rub the paper um, over the fish. Um, the harder you press, the more ink you're going to have transfer over. If you press lightly, which I often do in, in areas where I want it to pick up lightly, and that's how it will transfer. Gyotaku was meant traditionally for fishermen, and this collaboration with Pelagic Gear has taken my art to the next level by introducing Gyotaku to those who live the offshore lifestyle.